because everyone had such a positive reaction to the first Couch Tomato episode. Seriously, you guys loved it. We decided we'd launch one per month right here on the main channel for all of you to enjoy. Couch Tomato will still be releasing a new one every week on his own channel, so if you guys want more, go subscribe to him there. Movie starts off in the far reaches of space, all epic like with the cliche deep voice character explaining the backstory of an army of darkness in an upcoming battle against mighty heroes. And right after that is when we find out about this MacGuffin device. Time out for clarity. A MacGuffin device is a plot device that has no specific meaning or purpose other than to advance the story. I got the definition from a pretty reliable source and thought I'd share it since I personally found out about the meaning only a couple of weeks ago. At least once in the film, the characters associate the term Tesseract with the MacGuffin device that I'm talking about. Time in. All right, you and I both know nobody wants to see a movie set entirely in space unless it rhymes with Star Wars or Guardians of the Galaxy. So the director finds a way to get our main characters transported to the third furthest planet from the sun to make it more relatable, I guess. At the end of the day, I'm not going to force you to watch this movie. I could admit the plot is a little thin with the whole basic good versus evil type stuff, but these characters are pretty awesome. The one guy with the eye patch, I would totally wear that for Halloween. There's this inventor guy who serves as the brains of the operation. Plus you got this cutie and she's all like, shoot there, Derek, I don't care underwear's not under there. And last but not least, Death Mother know you weareth her drapes? The hero from another realm that's allergic to obesity is starring in the blockbuster also. It's this main character that shares the most history with our bad guy, more so than the other good guys. He's supposed to be this worthy dude with this weapon where only he could harness the full potential. When he uses it, lightning starts appearing and stuff, so he's kinda legit. As for the bad guy in this movie, the British accented villain seems like an underdog at first, but you, the viewer, might end up liking him more than the heroes in this film. Other than the fact that he's always begging people to nail before him. He's pretty cool. Dude's got some of the funniest lines in this movie and he's got this staff thingy that can transform his clothes to a Michael Jackson do you remember the time outfit on command which is more comical than frightening if anything. Hero movies usually go the cheap route with the heroes being all buddy buddy and eating shawarma like a big happy family. Kudos to the director for getting some tension in there. After some finger pointing in the woods the good guys decide to put their differences aside and partner to find out exactly what the mysterious MacGuffin device is capable of. The villain gets nervous not really sure why though. He's got way more people people than the good guys do. In fact, there's this one part where he's all like, I have an army. And the good guy's like, we have a character that's already signed a contract for an alleged future sequel. So it's highly unlikely the good guys die in this movie. To get leverage, the bad guy hypnotizes this one good guy character and starts getting valuable secrets and stuff. Wanna know something haha -ha funny? The plan actually works. Bad guys are able to raid the good guy's place of operation and get what they wanted. While the helpful heroes need help of their own, this government badge dude tries to jump in the fight. Now it's obvious people without power should stay on the sideline, but he gets a gun and thinks he's bulletproof and sadly he's not. Anyways, so this whole movie the bad guy's been bragging about this army but what they at though? Oh there they are. With the help of the MacGuffin thingy they're able to use the wormhole to transport to the streets of the city. Luckily in this film no innocent civilians are seen dying on screen so you could argue there's actually zero casualties if you don't include the bad guys. Plus some of the cops are able to provide a hand. I'll admit cops usually suck in disaster movies like this but they're able to secure the perimeter and stuff while the stronger heroes are occupied. Okay speaking of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air this one guy starts Will Smithing it up out of nowhere. So aliens are flying all over the place, right? And the heroes are like, I've seen these things in action and I'm well aware of their maneuvering capabilities. This son of a B word ends up actually flying the space tricycle thingy with no manual or nothing. The hero flies to the rooftop to get closer to the MacGuffin, but it sucks because the force field surrounding the MacGuffin device is impenetrable. To make matters worse, in the good versus evil battle, the bad guys overwhelm the good guys and it becomes too much for them to handle. You think for a split second the good guys might lose this one, but they eventually separate the main villain from his staff and win the battle. In the end, the heroes huddle up, hand a blue thingy majiggy to two of the main characters right before they transport back to their home planet. This is actually a fairy tale type ending, but not really, since the after credits scene suggests that there's more sequels and danger, of course, on the horizon. Those are 24 reasons these movies are the same. You agree? Yes, no, maybe so? If not, politely share your thoughts in the comment section below and click the subscribe button for more 24 reason videos.